There's no doubt about it. Canadian bank stocks are world renowned, not only for the crazy dividend increases in yields, but also surviving recessionary environments. We've got some earnings out of CBIC we're going to look at, but more importantly, we're going to see the broad view of all the Canadian banks, how they've been withstanding this current volatile market. And then we're going to take a look at a few bank ETFs, including some covered call bank ETFs that have actually been doing very well. And if that is a conversation you'd appreciate, hit that like button because the earnings we're going to look at have to do with CIBC, which we're going to take a look at in a little bit after just seeing the performance because year to date this one is up 12.22 percent with a 5.5 percent yield over the last five years we haven't seen a whole lot of growth out of this guy but i'd honestly say in this recessionary market these are probably pretty good buying opportunities considering this bank went from 94 cents quarterly 10 years ago and they hit about a dollar 60 they did a share split so they kind of split their shares but the dividend did just recently increase at the end of 2022 coming into 2023 to 85 cents a quarter with bank of nova scotia here kind of second in line trading up 8.57 percent year to date and this one very similarly isn't performing that well over a five-year basis you take a look at the long chart and you have a long-term horizon with these companies they tend to do fairly well but this one's paying 5.82 percent and take a look because it was paying 60 cents 10 years ago and today we're sitting at over a dollar really beautiful dividend increases now the largest companies in canada are banks unlike the us with crazy huge tech companies we got td and royal bank being the two largest companies that canada has and td is paying 4.26 percent year to date it's only up around three percent five years outperforming the other banks and on a max chart basis one of the best performing banks bar none Taking a look, I'm not sure if they did a share split back here, but taking a look at the lowest dividend since 2014 at 43 cents a quarter to today where we're sitting at a whopping 96 cents, which is basically doubling of the dividend. Now the largest bank stock and the largest company in Canada being Royal Bank here with a 3.88% dividend yield. I absolutely love Royal Bank over the last five years up 36%, you know, even outpacing Toronto Dominion Bank and the long performance has just been absolutely absurd again, paying 60 cents 10 years ago to today where it's paying a dollar 32 man that over a doubling of the dividend royal bank probably sits at the top of the largest companies in canada for this reason it's just such a world-renowned dividend company now we have bank of montreal here year to date up 4.42 percent another huge yielder at 4.4 and over the last five years again one of the best performing bank stocks look at the history of this company proving a little bit more volatile through the pandemic just because of the exposure they had to the oil and energy sector but take a look same sort of deal here 72 cents 10 years ago to today where you're getting a dollar 43 and then finally the top of the list here we've got the national bank of canada the little lesser known bank yielding just under four percent year to date up seven point five percent on a five-year basis also one of the best performing banks and on a max basis super stable performance you know through all these recessionary environments the canadian banking sector has stood out on a global level which is just you know it's something to be proud of as a canadian you know after the split they may have done back here i'd have to look into why the dividends dropped off it went from 46 cents a quarter to today where it's paying 97 cents very healthy increases so let's talk about how the banks are doing we're going to get a lot of bank earnings coming up into the next week or two and we just got some announcements for the final quarter um, of 2022 that just came in here and we can see that they their revenues went up by eight percent on a quarter over quarter basis was up 10 percent but where things got a little confusing was the net income dropped 70 seven percent which probably scared a lot of people and there's a few factors that came into play here and i just want to point those out real briefly from this article because the results included 1.17 billion in legal provisions after the bank lost a court battle with cerberus capital management which had accused the bank of defaulting on certain payments tied to limited resource note dating back to the financial crisis they had to pay 770 million us it's crazy that there's been a legal court battle going on since the 08 crash has been a decade in the making and this is a one-off payment but on an adjusted basis that excluded items such as you know settlements the bank said it earned one dollar or 1.84 billion down three percent from the same quarter a year ago or a dollar 94 per share cibc's core canadian banking business profit slipped 14 percent year over year to 589 million in the first quarter so we know that the business banking seems to be slowing down a little bit net income from Canadian commercial and wealth management, however, climbed 2% up to 469 million, driven by rising 
interest rates and higher commercial banking volumes. So in my opinion, one of the reasons I love exposure to the banks in a high interest rate environment, we're gonna get an initial blow. Things are gonna hit these banks pretty hard from probably defaulting loan loss provisions, but at the end of it, when the economy levels off in this new high interest rated environment, inevitably these banks are gonna benefit pretty greatly. But just to finish up, CIBC reported higher revenue across most of the business lines, but more funds set aside for potential bad loans weighed on the results. CIBC credit loss provisions grew by 220 million to 295 million from the same time last year. So again, we just have to get through this blow and I'm not offering financial advice by any metric here, but this is a buying opportunity. In my opinion, if you can just look at a three or five year horizon, being able to buy CIBC or BNS at these lows that it rarely experiences, like in a decade, it, it what drops maybe four to five times where we get these major drops in these banking stocks. So I'd be keeping an eye on them. And let's talk about other ways you can get exposure because a lot of people, you know, I get my exposure through VDY, which heavily weights Royal Bank and TD make up like a quarter of the entire ETF. But you can take some other approaches if you want more income, like this BMO covered called Canadian Bank ETF. It is down about 17% uh, from the recent highs. You're not getting crazy performance out of this, but you're buying it for income. Look at the income this thing has produced. I mean, it was once paying seven cents monthly 10 years ago and somehow stability in this is um, insane. It's hard to wrap your head around that how a covered call ETF, even through this volatile market, has still been, you know, doing very well in the dividend payments, now paying out 12 cents. I think on a basis that's, they're, they're looking at uh, a yield of 6.85% with a fairly high expense ratio of 0.72%. But my God, you're getting, you know, you wipe out the 0.72 and you're still getting over a 6% yield that is paid monthly. And then taking a look at a pure play, like a BMO equal weight bank index. So this ETF just purely holds the banks. There's no covered calls. It's just a straightforward ETF here. Performance has been really nice on this guy. So you're getting a little bit more, you know, obviously capital growth with this one. And the dividends going from 0.05 cents, again, another monthly paying ETF, all the way up to 12 cents. So you're talking about over a doubling of the dividend, just holding this wonderful ETF that currently Currently pays a yield of 4%. I don't like the lower yield on this one, which is why, I, well, it's not the worst. It's just the expense ratio is kind of high. It's why I like VDY because the expense ratio is like 0.2 and you're getting still a 4%. So this one you're wiping out down to about 3.4% as the actual dividend after expense. And taking a look at the holdings on this one, you know, you're know, you getting Bank of Montreal, Canadian Imperial, all the banks. There's pretty much six holdings making up the entire ETF. You could probably just buy the banks individually, weight them equally your own, and then just wipe out paying that crazy high fee. But I, I'm not much of a fan of covered call ETFs, but I'm really finding the long-term history of this BMO covered call bank ETF an attractive player for somebody that's maybe more focused on retirement or income. Now, look, if you guys want to continue this conversation, you want to get in a group surrounded by six and seven figure investors and chat with me 24 seven, seven days a week, consider supporting my patron account where you not only do you help me propel the content on my YouTube channel, but for less than a Starbucks coffee a month, you can sign up to my private chat group and get tons of privately listed content about my personal finances and things that I just will not share on my YouTube channel. And I'd greatly appreciate the support. But on that note, I do want to pass the question off to you. I'd love to know what you guys think about these Canadian banks in that comment section below.